Hello friends and welcome to Butterfly Meadows Homestead. Today I am going to share something very special with you. I'm going to share with you how I make a special yogurt. It's called El Ruderai and what it did for me. A little little bit, in just a little bit, I'm going to show you before pictures of my face before I started eating the El Ruderai yogurt. You see, I suffer from rosacea, and I didn't just have the rosacea that made you have redness, but I had the kind of rosacea that produced these pus-filled acne-like sores all over my face. They uh, were very inflamed, they would bleed, um, my entire face was covered and then and even some places you know on my chest and different places but they they covered my face and it, it was horrible and it, it hurt it was painful um, it was embarrassing I didn't like going out in public I would try to you know put on some natural makeup to try to cover them up, but of course you really can't cover anything that severe. Um, I could just maybe hide some of the redness, but I couldn't hide the sores or the bumps. Um, and it, it, it was terrible. Um, I've had rosacea all my life, but I usually just, well, most of my life, but I usually just had redness. And once in a while I would get, you know, something like a pimple that looked like a pimple here and there. Um, but about three years ago, for some reason, the rosacea just exploded. I don't know if it was environmental changes, if it was hormonal changes due to my age, or if it was stress due to things that were going on, or a combination of all of those things. But anyway, the rosacea exploded. I tried everything I could find. I researched. I tried essential oils. And I do a lot of natural things. And when I say I tried something, I don't mean I used it once or I used it twice. I, I followed a regimen trying to see if things would improve. I did many things. Nothing worked. It just seemed like everything made it worse. And one day I uh, was watching a video and and I heard about the El Ruderai yogurt and I was watching a video on the El Ruderai yogurt for its other many health benefits. It has so many benefits. And they just briefly mentioned rosacea, that it was good for rosacea. Well, I already knew from all the other studies that I had done that any skin disorder, whether it be eczema or any kind of disorder you may have on your skin, any kind of breakouts and rashes and different things like that, they stem directly from your gut. If there is something wrong in your gut and the uh, microbiome in your gut is out of balance, you're going to see it in your skin. It's gonna show up somehow on your skin. They're just so tightly related. So when they mentioned rosacea and I knew El Ruderai, you know, was a good gut bacteria that was really good for my microbiome, I thought, you know what, I need to try that. It's not that difficult. I can give that a try. And I mean, I was at the point where I would just try everything. I was searching so hard because I did not want the rest of my life to be where my face was just covered in these pus-filled sores. So I tried the El Ruderai yogurt. I made the, I ordered the stuff and I made the yogurt and I started eating the yogurt. And I'm telling you the truth, the first day I ate the yogurt, they recommend a half a cup a day is all you have to eat. The first day I ate the yogurt, the next morning, my face was already beginning to clear. It was amazing. I couldn't believe it. And I was so excited. So then of course, you know, the next days following, I ate much more than a half a cup a day because I was so excited um, that it was doing so much good. And now I eat El Ruderai yogurt pretty much every day. Sometimes 
I skip a day here and there because, you know, maybe I'm busy and I forgot to eat it and maybe I've been gone from home, uh, but I try to eat it every day. If I go more than two or three days without eating the El Ruta Rye yogurt, my face will break out again. Of course, not as bad as it was, but it will start to break out. And that'll remind me that I need to eat the yogurt. So I wanna show you the before pictures of my face, and then I will show you how to make this amazing probiotic yogurt. So let's jump into some details about the El Ruta Now, I don't have a bottle of the tablets that you're going to need to order right now, but I wanted to go ahead and make this video, so I'll just show you a picture uh, from Amazon, what they look like. And there'll be a link below in this description of this video where you can order these El Ruta probiotic tablets. And once you get the tablets, there is a ratio of how many tablets per how much milk to make your first batch. You only need the tablets for your first batch. And then after that, you will be using the yogurt you already have made to make future batches. So when you get your tablets, you're going to need something like this. This is a pedestal mortar or, uh, you know, it's used to crush peels, herbs, uh, most kitchens have one. They're not that expensive. You can usually find them, you know, at discount stores and all over the place. But uh, this is one that I have. And, and you're going to crush those tablets up just as fine as you can get them with, with your little, little mortar pedestal thing. And you're going to use those tablets when you're inoculating your first batch of yogurt. So in addition to the tablets, you're also going to need some inulin. And there are many, many different kinds of inulin on the internet. And not all inulin is created equal. So there are different um, brands of inulin and they have different costs. And inulin in a nutshell is really just a starch. It's a prebiotic. Um, I have even used potato starch to make my yogurt. Now, it's not the best because um, it, it does it. I know it's not the best because it will settle in the bottom of my container, where if I use the more expensive inulins made from uh, artichoke hearts, uh, is it artichoke hearts? I can't remember. But anyway, I'll put some links um, below where, and you can choose which inulin you want. Right now I have this one and it's made from chicory root. I haven't had any problems with it, but you will need inulin. And basically it's a type of a starch and you add that to your mixture when you're making the yogurt because the El Ruta Rye needs the extra food. So when you're making yogurt, what happens is the probiotic that you have in your yogurt, if you're making regular everyday yogurt that you buy off the shelf in the store, that's lactobacillus usually. And what it does is it eats the sugar out of the milk, the lactose out of the milk. That's how the yogurt, uh, that's how the bacteria produces and thrives and, and makes the yogurt. Well, El Ruta yogurt processes for 36 hours and because of that we need to give it some extra food because it's going to eat all the sugars and all the lactose out of the milk and then it's going to need more so we give it inulin and so that's why we add the inulin to our mixture so you're going to need the uh, El Ruta tablets some inulin and some half and half now this makes a a pretty thick yogurt um, 
If you use milk, skim milk, other kinds of milk, regular milk, whole milk, you're going to get a thinner yogurt, like a more drinkable yogurt. Um, and if you like that, that's just fine. If you want a thicker yogurt, you're gonna to have to use half and half. If you want it even thicker, you can use heavy whipping cream. I would only use half heavy whipping cream though and half, half and half. I wouldn't use all heavy whipping cream or that yogurt is going to be so thick you could cut it like cheese. So, uh, but I found if I just use half and half and I just buy this at Walmart, it's just um, regular half and half. It does say it's ultra pasteurized. You do want ultra pasteurized if you can find it. Uh, you can't make this yogurt out of raw cow's milk. Um, our cow used to be in milk and I, I've tried it before and I studied out why, what was going on. And the thing is, l Rudera is a probiotic that is not, I guess, a way that you could say it is not as aggressive as other bacteria. So raw milk has bacteria in it that is good for us. But if you use raw milk to make the l Rudera yogurt, what happens is the other bacteria eat all the food and the l Ruderi is the runt pretty much and gets pushed to the side and, and doesn't thrive. So in the end you get a yogurt but you're not getting a yogurt full of l Ruderi, l Ruderi like you, your goal was. So you want an ultra pasteurized uh, milk and hopefully half and half um, or whatever you choose but half and half works really good for me. And, and your inulin and your tablets or either some previously made yogurt that I have right here. So here in, in this cup, I have uh, the yogurt I had previously made. I just used an, an old yogurt container to put my yogurt in. You can store it however you want. Just store it in a, in a good airtight container. It will last and last and last. The worst thing that could happen to it, it might get a little more sour, um, tangy, um, the longer that you keep it. But you don't, you know, you don't have to use it within a week or two weeks or, or whatever. Um, you can keep your yogurt in the refrigerator. I don't really know what the limit is. Um, I've never had any go bad. So, like I said, you're just, it's just going to get tangier and tangier, but it's not going to ruin. Um, of course, I mean, I'm sure there is a limit on how long it would last, and if you want to test that limit and find out, feel free. But, so we have our yogurt, we have our yogurt, we have our inulin, we have our half and half. Now, let's talk about yogurt machines. When I first started making El Ruderai yogurt, I did not have a yogurt maker. Um, so what I did was I turned the light on in my oven and I took a grill thermometer and I placed it in, in the oven and I left the light on overnight. The next morning I got up and checked the temperature um, inside my oven and it was like 105 or somewhere around there. And that was wonderful because the thing about El Ruderai yogurt is Anything over 110 or 110 and above will kill l Ruderi. It's a very delicate probiotic. So your normal yogurt machines get above 110. So most of your normal everyday yogurt machines, you can't even use them to make l Ruderi. I even checked my crock pot on warm and it got up like in the 140s so I couldn't use my crock pot to make El Ruderai, but I could use my oven. So what I did was I took the crock out of my crock pot. Most crock pots nowadays, the crock actually lifts out. So I lifted out the crock, made sure it was clean, and I put my yogurt mixture inside the crock pot crock and put the lid on it and put it inside of my oven and set myself a timer for 36 hours. It worked perfectly. Um, and I made it like that for, a, for months until I finally bought this Louvelle yogurt maker. And I'll leave a link to the Louvelle below as well. I do not get a commission 
from the Louisville yogurt maker. I do get a commission from anything you buy off of Amazon if you use my link. Um, it does not affect your cost, but not for the Louisville. But there's only one place to buy the Louisville, and I'm gonna leave the link below. Um, they are not cheap machines, but the Louisville has extra temperature controls. For example, this 97 is the lowest temperature, then it goes to 100, and then it goes to 104. And so I can choose any of those settings. And also what the Louisville does is it will make yogurt for up to 36 hours. It has a timer that goes all the way up to 36 hours. Your normal yogurt makers don't have the temperature selection, um, so they get way too hot. And they also usually will only go for like 12 hours. Um, so that means you would, I don't know how you would, you would have to constantly be turning it back on to get the 36 hours that you need. So I did eventually buy the Louisville because I knew this was something I was going to be doing for a long time, possibly the rest of my life. But if you don't have a yogurt maker, can't afford a yogurt maker, you most likely have an oven that has a light in it. Now, I don't know how the gas ovens would work. I've had gas before. I never tested the temperatures inside. You would have to do the same experiment I did, which would be turn the light on and check the temperature overnight to see what temperature it got to. But just your regular oven, most of them should be operate the same. So t check the temperature of your oven, like turn the light on one night before you go to bed. The next morning, get up and uh, use your grill thermometer and check the temperature on the inside and just make sure that it's not above at or above 110. Anything below that between 97 and 104 is optimal. So you can definitely uh, use your oven. Now I have here in this bowl, I have uh, just a, a little over two tablespoons of yogurt from, uh, from this, this batch that I had made. And um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I have a lot of the whey. The whey is the liquid that separates. So you might get your yogurt out of the refrigerator and find that it has a lot of liquid on the top of it. Well, that's whey. And that whey is just as good for you as the yogurt. Don't throw it away. If you are gonna drain it off, save it in a nice clean container and you can use it, if nothing else, for your next batch as your starter. You just need two tablespoons of whey or yogurt um, from your El Ruderi. But don't throw it away. And I also will take the whey sometimes if I'm drinking a glass of cold tea or juice or um, even kombucha sometimes, and I'll put a little bit of the whey from the El Ruderi yogurt in there. So I'm getting that extra boost of probiotics in my drink, whatever it is I'm drinking. So the first thing you do, let's get into how, how you make it. So the first thing you're gonna need is either your yogurt from a previous batch, two tablespoons per one quart. And it is recommended to start out when you start making your yogurt to just use one quart. Um, don't try to make a bigger batch. The first time you make it, you're gonna be using tablets and you don't wanna to have to use too many tablets. Um, so use one quart and it's two tablespoons of yogurt per one quart of milk. So there I have my two tablespoons plus a little bit. And I always err on the plus side with my yogurt because I wanna make sure I get a good strong batch of El Ruderi. Um, and, and here I just wanted to show you the, the consistency of this yogurt. It is pretty thick. I don't know how thick you like your yogurt, but this is with half and half. And this has been sitting out of the refrigerator for a little while too, so, so it's pretty thick. And I also stirred the whey that was on top up in it. So if you drained that whey off, it would probably be even thicker. Um, so I know a lot of people like the, the thick Greek yogurt. So I have my two tablespoons of yogurt, or you have your, I think it's eight tablets or something like that crushed up. And we start with that. And then you want to take your half and half 
like I said, you want an ultra pasteurized, if you can get it, of half and half. And I'm just gonna thin that down a little bit. And I usually use a whisk. Just make sure all of your bowls and utensils are as clean as you can get them because we don't want to contaminate our yogurt. And then you want, per quart of milk, you want a two tablespoons of inulin. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of inulin. And the inulin helps the El Ruderai have something to feed on for that entire 36 hours after it eats the lactose out of the milk. And you just want to take your whisk and stir this all up. Make sure you get that inulin in there pretty much dissolved. Let me get a measuring cup so I can measure out my four cups. So I'm making this in the in the Louvel machine. So you want to make sure everything is nice and clean. Now the way this machine works is uh, there's a little heating element in here, and what you do is you put water before you turn it on the heating part on. You put some water in the bottom. And then make sure you have water in your Louvelle before you turn it on or it'll just burn the little element up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our container that is going to sit inside of the water bath. And I'm going to measure, I'm going to measure three and a half cups of half and half because I already put some in my my slurry there that I made and that'll be a quart. So you want one quart of half and half and that would include the part that you put into your slurry when you were mixing your inulin and your yogurt together. Then you want to stir it all up. And you don't want to skimp on this part. You want to make sure you mix it up good. If you don't get it mixed up well, you may see in your finished product, you may see these, these spots that are discolored. Um, and, and that's just where either some of the inulin or some of the probiotic that you crushed up didn't get mixed in very well. It's perfectly fine to eat. Nothing you have to worry about. So we have our mixture all mixed together. We're going to put our lid on and, and vent. You want the vent open. And I actually, this lid came with a little silicon seal around it. I actually took that off because it was causing my yogurt, because usually I make two quarts and this is full, and it was causing my yogurt to spew out. And I found if I, if I took that off and just used the lid this way, that, that didn't happen. So there's just a, a little tip for you. And so then you set your container down inside of the of the yogurt maker with the water in it, and then I usually, there's a there's a line here that tells me how full to put that. Put the water up to the line and then you put your lid on your yogurt maker. Now I'm going to bring the camera down here and show you how I set the timer on the Louisville. Okay, so hopefully I can hold this steady enough. Um, so right now, um, hopefully you can see that it's flashing at 97. I actually want to go 
I like to do my yogurt at 100 degrees because I have that option on here. See, it can go to 104, 97, or 100. I like the 100, the results I get. Any of those temperatures are fine for the El Rudera, but I like to do mine at 100. And then we want 36 hours. This is the time. So, so we go to 36 hours and then we hit confirm. And then it quits flashing and now the timer will run for 36 hours. So this will heat up to 100 degrees and then it will start counting down 36 hours. And then in 36 hours, I will have a new batch of El Ruderi yogurt. Now, once you get your yogurt made, uh, another few tips that you might like to know is you don't want to disturb the El Ruderi yogurt while it's warm. So once it finishes, take it out, you know, turn everything off, take it out and put it in the refrigerator and let it cool. If you stir in the El Ruderi yogurt before it's cool, it's going to curd up kind of like cottage cheese. Um, it's best to let it cool. If you let it cool, then that won't happen. So just take it out, put it in the refrigerator and let it cool. And then you can take it and put it in any container you want to put it in to keep it. Um, and then when you go to eat it, you can flavor it however you want to flavor it. There are so many different ways to flavor yogurt. I mean, there's really no excuse for saying I don't like yogurt when you can flavor it in so many ways. You can, if you don't want to use granulated sugar, you can use honey, maple syrup. Um, they make other kinds of natural sugars. Um, you can use jams and jellies and um, fruit, uh, fruit with syrup on it and just so many different things. Whatever you want to flavor your yogurt with, if you don't want to eat it plain, go ahead and just mix it into your yogurt and enjoy. Uh, so, and you can use a stevia and, and the um, other artificial flavoring, uh, artificial sugars, if you're a diabetic and you need to use something like that, um, you can also use those to sweeten your yogurt. Um, and you can make different things from your yogurt. You can make uh, dressings and uh, mayonnaise-like substances and sauces and dips and all kinds. You can kind of use it like you would sour cream um, or cream cheese, and you can use it in recipes like that. Of course, just remember if you heat it, you're gonna kill the bacteria, but anything that you don't have to heat, it will be fine. Um, I really think if you have any kind of skin disorder, eczema, rosacea, whatever you, the acne, it's even good for acne. If you have a teenager who is suffering for ac from acne, they may benefit from El Ruderi. Um, it's worth trying, it's just a food, it's not like a medication, so it's probably not going to do you any harm and probably will just do you some good. But I'm going to show the pictures once again encourage you to go ahead and try the El Ruderi. And like I said, all the links are below. Um, in my description, I always put instructions and uh, recipes and everything. And so I will have all of that information below in the description. Be sure to uh, share this video with your friends. If you have anyone who is suffering from rosacea like I was or, or any other kind of skin condition, share this with them. Um, it's even good for things like irritable bowel and other bowel disorders uh, because it is such a good bacteria for the gut. So be sure and uh, share that with anyone, share it with anyone that you have that, that might need help in that area. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button um, and watch some of my other videos. I have some great videos on making bread and canning and preserving food. And I'm so glad you stopped by today. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless. Bye-bye.